Good morning. I'll call this uh, Rishima part three. So two weeks ago I began explaining and reviewing the sugya called the Shimo. Actually, uh, one second. Last, sorry. Part two. Shima part two. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. So last week I began explaining and reviewing Siddhis. And of course it originates in Kabbalah. So just briefly summing up what I what uh, we discussed last week. And then continue to the next step. And that is, as the word implies, a shima means impression, something that remains, you know, impression, uh, what were the other words I used? Residue, another word for shima is a, uh, what was the other word I used? I forgot already. Imprint. No. And just the kids are, the importance of it is, goes always back to the central theme of Agdus Hashem, that as much as possible, the Ebershter wants us to be miyachet. It's a mitzvah says the rice, actually. Leyachet Hashem is baruch. It's one of the mitzvahs, like you see in Dech, there's mitzvah of Hamon Esalakus, Hamunah, and there's a mitzvah leyachet. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alekein, Hashem Achad. So as much as possible, humanly possible, with our comprehension and with our emotions, to be able to experience a unity of God, which also means a unity with us. So essentially, the whole say is Tauslus, and beginning even lifting at Simtum, and every level is not there for the Abish, he doesn't need any of this. He can create it all, call Yochel any way he wishes, without any steps altogether. But for us, according to the Seichel, as the Alta Rebbe says in a certain Maimir, that the way the Seichel, the Abish, created us, that, which tells us that's the way he wanted the Seichel to be. That too could have been different. Two plus two could have been five. And the uh, day could have been night. Or there could have been concepts we not, can't even imagine right now. There could have been 25 dimensions, not just three or four. But the way he created it, which again, we that we don't know why, because there is no why. It's above Seichel. But once they were to create such a world with such Seichel, so then everywhere possible, we try to understand how they were to did it and how we can connect with it. So in other words, Ebershah does not mean removed from us. Which in simple Aveda means, Hashem needs of love 24-7, that Ebershah is with you in every detail of your life. In simple Aceus, as we spoke a few weeks ago about Tzimtzum and Tzimtzum, Kipshute, not Kipshute. So the Shima goes into the same category. It's another level, a critical level, that helps us bridge our reality, which as we know, the Yesh, no one needs proof that you feel like a yesh and nifrit b'fneatzme every second of our lives. That's how we feel. And from time to time, we may have some hergish and elikus. How we can reconcile that and bridge that type of consciousness and reality with divine consciousness so that Hashimu deals with one critical aspect of this, just as every other part of Ishtalshlis. And we'll go through as many levels as we can throughout this year. So the Hashimu as I explained, begins as a sugya in just a few words in uh, in the Hagar, in Eitzus Chaim, that is quoted from the Alter Rebbe, the Kutte Teda, that when we say Chol L'Mokim Pony, it says these Loshen, Chol Lav Davke, that's the language of the Hagar there, which is most likely written by the Tamidei Arizal, or Tamidei Tamidei Arizal, so that there's a concept of Rishima. And this Rishima is developed more in the Kabbalah of Rabbi Sorel Sarug, namely in the Sefer Emek HaMelech, and some other places that I cited last week. I'm not going to go over it all. I just wanted to go through the Ishtashlis, where we are right now in the concept. So what we know now is that this void that we talk about, this black hole called Chol L'Mokim Pone, is Lav Dafke, meaning completely empty. So besides the fact that the Tzimtzum is not Kipshute, Lashitas Chabad, which is the Maskona, the Psak, that even the concealment, even the, the Helam, even, in other words, the fact there's no air doesn't mean literally, it means the air is concealed. And can move it from the Abish's point of view, there's no Helam altogether. 
But even from the point of view of Oyer, it's only Behelim, as we discussed at length. But there's something else. There's also a Shimu. But it's still mysterious. What does it mean? Because if you say the word Mishima means impression, what was the other word? I'm just looking. It's a good word. <laughs> Can't come to me right now. I know I use three words. Impression, residue, and trace. Trace. That it's a trace of something. What is it a trace of? What is an impression of? When you say impression, for example, let's say, as I mentioned, you turn on the lights here. It's very bright. You close the lights. You know, your eyes still are used to sometimes, you know, you feel like you could you sense that it was one's bright here. Or other examples. Like, you know, there's example that some Sadiq brings for the Rishima, actually, in Derech Mitzvah and Sheesh Mitzvah You write words on a page, then you erase it. So we know even when you erase it, there's a trace. Whether you can discern it or not, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So what is it a trace of exactly? Now, Bapashtas is a trace of what happened before the Tzimtzum. There's no other thing to trace at this point. But what does that mean? What was there that's going to be traced, which I'm going to discuss today much more in detail. Because from the from the Kisra Rizal, meaning from the Yitzhaz Chaim and the different sources I gave him, Kamelech, Shever, Yosef, and uh, Mayon, Mayon, uh, Chaim, Mayon, um, Mayon, Chaim, Mayon Chaim, there it doesn't discuss this in detail. It just says that Kedusha Lezazim and Kema, and, it, and therefore, there has to be something that remained after the tzimtzum in this hollow. Now, everyone agrees it's not something that you can work with. That's why you need a kav. No one says that Hashimah replaces the kav. In other words, after the, this state of tzimtzum and Hashimu comes a kav, which in the Moshul is the teacher was silent, completely concealed the seichel. And then, and we say a Hashimah remains, which still needs to be explained. What is this Hashimu? And then the teacher begins a stream of consciousness. He begins to teach. Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Me'emes, Ha'kein, Ha'shma, Ba'arvin, Tanya, Pede, Gimel, Sof, Pede, Gimel, Denid. I mean, begins to teach. He needs some Gilui. Now, however, the Gilui, because it comes after the Tzimtzum, so to speak, conceptually, it now is a Gilui that is Lefi Erech, Elimus, so to speak. Because it's a Kav, Kotzer, Kav, Chut, Kotzer, Vedak, which means it's thin and narrow. Like, think of like a laser beam. So it's not all over. The air is not air and stuff. Malakol hametzias, and there's no room for anything else. There's befedish room, and the kav becomes the creative force. Think of it like uh, the Abishta's, uh utensil, his paintbrush, with which he's going to create, measure, and create all of existence. <laughs> so everyone agrees there's a kav because that's befedish in kisradis. Abachal, that's not even a question. The question is, what is the reshima and its role in contrast to this kav? So because the mukabalim that I mentioned, don't talk about it in detail, um, you see Chassidus actually develops this idea. So where we up to, I covered the Etzim Inya of Rishimu, what it is, like he says in the, in the Kut Teta that I quoted, uh, that he brings from the Ime Kamelech, that it's Asius. That's what it does say in the, in the, in the Kabbal, in Kabbal, Asius, which in the language of Chassidus, as we'll discuss, is going to be called Sheda Shakelin. So now we have introduction of a thing called letters. Mm-hmm. Till now, we only know, talked about Eir. We look in Eitz Chaim, it says, Eir ain't sof, There's no mention of letters. There's no mention of anything except Eir. And then there's a Tzimtzum. So now, Rishimu introduces us to the concept of Eisius. Specifically, the Eisius of the Reish Lamed Aleph Sha'orim, which is not really the gate to go into right now. It's basically the Tzirufim of Aleph, Chav, and Beis Chav, and so on. So when you add it up, it adds up to be uh, 231 twi- times 2 is 462. When it breaks into 2, it's Reish Lamed al Shom. The Alter Rebbe brings it in, in the Shaykh of Amunah. And it breaks it down. Exactly. But basically, it's the Aleph Beis in a certain structure. It's the Asifs of the Chav Beis, Asifs of Lashem Kedish, but in a structure of different Sirufim with which they wish to create. So it's the Asifs. Just suffice it to say it's Asifs. Which makes sense because how do you convey Eir without Asius? Now again, the Abishta doesn't need it, but we but it doesn't make sense. I can't how could I convey my idea here if I wasn't using words and letters? You wouldn't hear anything I said. Whether it's Asius Haf Machshova, Dibur or Maisa, you need Asius. But we need to understand what exactly these Asius, where are they rooted before the Tsimtsum, and what hap- what is the Rishima exactly, and then how what happens post Rishima. So we have to understand all three stages. What was there before? So to speak, when I say before, I mean, again, conceptually, because that before is right now as well. 
And what is the Shimu? And what happens afterwards? But we know it's Aces. That we know. So now, to make more sense of what this Shimu is and its role that it plays, after we discussed, yes, okay, fine, that there's something that remains. In other words, Kedusha Lezazim came. It can't be that Elikus should be even completely concealed, even if it's not Kipshute. There has to be something. So therefore, there's something. But what that something is and what role it plays, this, I've not found it in Kabbalah. That This is explained primarily in Chassidus Chabad. And the first place, uh, you know, all the Marami Kemis you probably have, I posted it. If you want to go, just uh, like last week. I'm just going to refer to certain Marami Kemis as I go here. Let me just open this document. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm now discussing the Kutat Teda, Lahavan Inya Mashukosa Be'etzus Chaim. It's in the Hesophis of of the Chelik of Ayikra. After Bechukesa, it's a, a very unique mimer, very Yisedizdika mimer. Talks about Simsim and Shimu. And the Alter Rebbe gives there two Mashalim. So one of the hallmarks of Chsidis Chabad, of the Alter Rebbe, is examples. In Kabbalah, by the way, there are examples, but they're much less and they're not always fully explained. So the Alter Rebbe gives a muscle for Tzimtzum, and then he gives a muscle for the Rishimu. What I'm going to try to cover today, based on time, is explain these Mishalim, and then show how the Mitla Rebbe takes to the next level and says the Mishalim are not completely uh, complete, and he gives new Mishalim, gives four other Mishalim. So we're going to end up having probably six or seven Mishalim on the Rishimu, just to show you how many different angles there are to it. Because the movement, the Mishalim are not It's just each one covering a different facet of a Ruchni Zedek Madreik. So that shouldn't be a wonder. And uh, so let's start with Alter Rebbe, what he says. This is Lohavani Mashakosa Beit Saschaim. I'll also try to cover what he says in Lukut Teta, also in Bahar. We'll get to that shortly. Let's start with this. In Bahar, he also gives this Mashal. Eshab Seisai Tishmeru, the Alter Rebbe. So the Mashal for Tzimtzum, which is one Patek and then another Patek, the Moshe for the Shima. I'm just mentioning both because they come, they follow one another. The Moshe for the Simpson, the Alter Rebbe gives is someone's learning a Mesechta and is aware of it, is conscious, whatever Mesechta is. I think he may give an example there. You're learning a Mesechta and you're, you're completely aware of what you're learning. Then you move on to another Mesechta. So what happened to your knowledge of this Mesechta? So Alter Rebbe says that is what happens with the Simpson. It doesn't disappear. You still have the idea, but it's not in any conscious way. So like he says, the iskaba, when the time you're asik in it is begali. And be idna the lay the lay when you're not busy with it, it recedes into the background. What we would call uh, the subconscious or the unconscious or uh, definitely not begali. So you may have a lot of you may even know uh, for all I know. But right now you're not thinking about it. So where is it? It's in your mind, but it's not Begali. That's the example he gives, Bikitsur. He elaborates more than I just said, but that's the Futsimt. What about the Shimu? So in the next page, he gives another example. He gives an example that you learn the Mesechta, but not you moved on to another Mesechta. You're now reviewing it with a Kitsur, a summary of what you learned. Not the full length, in depth study, but a summary. And I think he even brings the Piske Dinim. You're bringing out the halachas that came from the learning. In other words, you learn Masechta Shabbos. So Masechta Shabbos has all kinds of shakavitariya. But let's say you're summing up a sugya, and now here are the halachas we take out from this sugya. What's a malacha, what's not a malacha, whatever it may be. So he says this kitzer is a kitzer of the whole thing, but the whole thing is not there, begali. And that's his example for Rashim, which is uh, when you read it the first time, it's interesting because that doesn't sound like a Rashim. That sounds like pretty much a summary. That means that after the tzimtzum, the Rishim remained, that, that if you were there, right after the tzimtzum, you'd see a kitzur of everything lifting at tzimtzum. It sounds like something that it doesn't seem like the pshat in Eitz Chaim. Eitz Chaim, he says, there's there's there needs to be a complete tzimtzum. And only after that is a kav. So what are we saying? That it's not a complete tzimtzum, there's a kitzur. That's what the Alta Rebbe says. So the Mitla Rebbe, in the Shari Yechud, Perek Yud Beis and Yud Gimel, discusses this, and it's elaborated by the Rebbe Rashab in the Sukkot Maimorim of Eter, in the Maimor Chesidim Anshe Maisa Tafresh Ayin, and the following Maimor B'yem Hashmini Atzeres, where he elaborates on the Mitla Rebbe's Shari Yechud, and the, there the discussion is 
Kitzer would imply some gili. The Shimu, no one ever said it was a gili. He just said there's something that remains. Like I said before, an echo, a, uh, a trace. But it's not something like I mentioned that's Moshe and Tzemach Tzedek. You erased. It's erased. Erased is not a kitzer. Now, they're not asking a question on the al Rebbe. They're just trying to understand what the al Rebbe's Moshe is. So the maskana is, just briefly, you can look up at the Mara Mekemis, is that the al Rebbe is talking about one aspect of the Rishim. And the truth is, the Rishim has other aspects which are far more concealed. Kitzer means... Not that if you were there, let's say for argument's sake, the Ebrist allowed you, it's not possible because that state, no, nothing can exist. But hypothetically, if you were able to take a uh, tour and you were right there post symptom and here's a Rishima, what would you see? You wouldn't see anything. Rishima does not mean you see it. Rishima just means there's something there. It doesn't mean you see it. So the Alter Rebbe is saying that what's there is like a Kitzur. Not that it's like someone actually learning and saying, okay, I don't know the whole Masechta, but at least I know the Halachs. No, that's just a moshal. The moshal is just as a, a kitz or a piske alochis are compared to the etzem hasugia of the Gemara, so too the Rishima compared to the Eden of Lifniat Simtsu. So we think of it more like a relative relationship. In the uh, Kutateta Bahar, he uses another example, which I think is also in the uh, Hovnini Masha Kosovets I have to recall that both, maybe in both places, but maybe not. He uses, for some reason, he uses the example of Bali Tesfus. That the Bali Tesfus, when they said something in Tesfus, they said it in words. So as much as they say, the words don't capture everything that they're thinking. So that's his example there, which is a similar example, but I'm uh, just mentioning it for the record. So in other words, the Aces that remain, like when you look at it, so you can learn Tesfus, and you understand a little of the Kavonus at Tesfus, but not everything that's there. Now, why the Alter Rebbe uses Tesfus? I looked up if anybody comments on that. Why not Rashi? Why not uh, any other commentary? For that matter, Tere Shabbat Peh, as it explains Tere Shabbat Bixav. But it's what he uses, Bale Tesfus. There may be a reason because Tesfus maybe has a particular way of interpreting the Gemara. Not sure. But regardless, that's another muscle that he uses. What you see from this that the al Rebbe is emphasizing not the helm of Rashimu, but somewhat, the I don't say Gilui, but something, something of substance. So what are the four Mishalim that the Mitla Rebbe introduces? So first one, of course, is Kitzur, because that's the Alta Rebbe's Moshe. The four Mishalim, I think I may have posted that as well, but if not, I'll just say, the four is Kitzur, a map, Simonim, and a Remez. Okay, and then there's going to be another Moshe, which we'll talk about afterwards. So let's talk about these four Mishalim, and just before I go into them, the Rebbe Rasha makes it very clear that these four Mishalim are simply four different facets in other words, angles, different aspects of the Rishimu. And each one, as we go in order, is more and more concealing. So Kitzer would be the closest. The Kitzer is closest to that which was before the Kitzer. Then comes the second marshal is a map. When you make a map, let's say, of a country, the uh, Mitla Rebbe and the Rebbe Rashab say, so let's say you map a map of the United States, a map of Israel. So the map, if you know maps, I know some people, you show them a map, they have no clue what it is. I once showed the Talmudim a map of Israel. Someone said it was India. Someone said it was Alaska. You know, but, but some people know maps, some people don't. But officially, a map is, who drew these maps? These maps were drawn by, uh, what do they call them, uh, choreographers? No, there's a name for it. What? Cartographer. Cartographer. We have a scholar in residence. Okay. Cartographer. So there was a time where they, where they mapped out uh, based not on uh, visual like satellite images. When the navigators, for example, came to the United States 400 years ago, 500 years ago, so as they traveled the coast, they would map out what they saw. So it wasn't perfect, but it was as close as possible to the boundaries, let's say the East Coast, when they traveled through the East Coast. And through that, they were able to get a sense of, we have old maps you can see written by, um, by choreographers. Officially, one of when Columbus came to America, there was a Jewish, uh, who is it? Rabbi Zakat, uh, Meisha, not Meisha. Um, one of the, one of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, one of the, uh, the Spanish uh, scholars, huh? Of uh, Ramza Kotel, yeah. Was a choreographer and he actually paint, he actually helped the navigation, the plan. Because when they would travel, they needed to follow something. And this is a Maim Ramuzga. Bottom line is a map, 
is essentially a snapshot, if you wish, of an area. But you're not going to compare a map to the thing itself. The map, you can look at the United States, you can look at the entire globe in one snapshot. It's going to take you all, it's going to take you 24 hours at least to travel around, even with a plane. So in other words, what's the relationship between the map of something and the thing it's mapping out? Which really you could apply even to a map that's not a, 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 a what's it called, a, a land map. You know, they could also map out a, 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 the wireframe of a website or the map of a blueprint for a building. So all of these go into the category of a map. So what's the relationship between the map and the thing it's mapping out? Is there's definitely, it's not a map of something else, but it's also a very far cry from the original. If someone said to you, based on a map, that's that, that you understand Israel because you see it on the map, what do you know about Israel? Until you're there, you don't know. You know, just as a Maimar Musgil, when the Rebbe and Tavshin Mem, it was Shabbos Bereshis, they sold the mitzvahs on Shabbos Bereshis. So when the Rebbe would, uh, when the Gabbai would get up, uh, would wear Streimel, that was the minik, and he would tell a story or, or say a Dvarteda, and then he would sell the mitzvahs. It was a bidding war. The Rebbe was always very immersed in a chumash usually. And it was like almost uh, seemed oblivious of what was going on. So the that year, Rabbi Pinson, Shia Pinson, was the Gabbai. So Migdalais from uh, Shua Munshan of Asholom came out then, and there was a story that he has it. He said that when they first made the maps of the United States, they came to Russia. And they showed a map of the United States to the Alter Rebbe. <coughs> and the Alter Rebbe pointed and said, there's a mistake on the map. So they asked, the so they afterwards, I mean, the Alter Rebbe was never in America. How does he know there's a mistake? So they said, it's talk about Isa Bora Alna. Since the Alter Rebbe knows what it says in Teda, and the Abish to create the world based on a Raisa Teda. So from Teda, he saw that there's a mistake in the map. Now, from the very uncharacteristic, from the very rare times that the Rebbe would come, and the Rebbe was looking in the Chumash, I remember, and he didn't pick up his head even. And most people didn't even know the Rebbe said something because he wasn't like speaking to the Elam. He just like said it say, from, from looking in the Chumash, I think it was. And the Rebbe said, When the Iker is, at Bishas Mekumpna America is on Mishmach and Kintos. Now, I was a chazer and a maniach. I had to write it, so I, re I heard it. And afterwards, I remember by Chazor, I said it. Some people heard it. Some people didn't. They said, what are you talking? I said, well, I didn't make it up. I heard it. That's what the Rebbe said. Others also heard it. it wasn't, I wasn't the only one. So the Rebbe said, the ikiri is abishas mekum na merikas om nishmach and kintos. So we I bring down that for hours and hours, what that means. It's not really relevant to our discussion. Maybe it is because it's referring to a map. So the Rebbe was saying that the Alter Rebbe sees that America as it's aligned, the Ruchnius, and the about Isa. The Rebbe saying the Ike, when you come to America, we should make sure that America is aligned with Teda. Shouldn't make a mistake. So in other words, Alter Rebbe was able to see Mamayla Lamata. By us, Mamata Lamata, that's how we understood it. Maybe you could say different Pshetlach in it. Upon him, getting back to our discussion, so the first marshal is a map. So you can't say a, a map is less than a kitzer, because a kitzer at least you have aces, you have teichen. You know, the kitzer in shulchan aruch, or in any kitzer, a summary. Let's say a kitzer of a maimer. It's not like it, whereas a map, you can't say is a summary of what's going on in that particular country, or whatever it is that you're mapping out. But it's definitely a snapshot. It's definitely what we call like a microcosm. So this muscle, as explained by the Rabbi Mekla Rebbe, especially the Rabbi Rashab, moves the Rishimu from being less kitzer, but more like a map. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you could see the map when you look at the Rishimu. Without the Kav, you can't see anything. But at least, potentially, the Rishimu that remained after the Tzimtzum has in it the elements of a map. We'll soon explain what that means more detail. Let me go through the Mashalim first. The next muscle is Simonim. Like you see in the Gemara sometimes, a simon, different simonim to remember something. So you have a simon. Now, simon is completely, if you don't know what that simon means, you can never figure it out. It can be, you know, it's, it's a sign that you give. Sometimes people give signs to each other and only they know. It's meant to be secret. So simonim is even less gilui than a map. And the finally, I think the final one I said was a remez, right? A remez. So Simon, I think if I recall correctly in that, that he says, so Simonim is still something that you see. It reminds you, know, the Rambam talks a lot, of, many times he brings numbers, that there are 11 this or 35 that. 
just to remember. But it's not something you really, if you don't know the sugya, there's just a simon to remember. It's like you make a sign for yourself to remember something. And finally, Aremes is the weakest one, so to speak. Because Aremes is like a teacher, let's say, uh, that you know that you don't, that the smart person will understand when you allude to something. So it's not even a simon, it's even more behelim. It's like Aremes. These are the four Mishalim that we have. And as, as the Rebbe Rashab explains clearly, why they're four Mishalim, because each one has a mila that the other one doesn't have. But above all, which is most important for our discussion, is that after the symptom, something remains, and the only shaila is how much gili there is in it, or potential gili. So, so um, if you think of it this way, let's say this room was completely dark, and you could have uh, a kitzer in the room, you could have a map, you could have a simon, you could have a remes. Now, you don't see any of them, but it's there. And when the light will shine you'll be able to derive from the object, whether it's the, whether it's the kids or the map or the other two, you'll be able to get a picture of what was there, what that map is, is, is reflecting. So in other words, the Mashalim are all really meant to be different levels of Ahdus, if you wish. What does that mean? Different levels of Ahdus. Like if a real Ahdus would be, for example, when Chassidus says, or Kabbalah says that uh, when a couple come together, it's a reflection of Kuchabrich and Knesset Yisrael. Zah and Malchus. So obviously the Gashmiz Dikizivu is not like a, a Ruchniz Dika one, but it's very similar and it's a physical manifestation of something. When we say, let's say, water is the physical manifestation of Chesed. So of course, Chesed is uh, ethereal. Chesed you can't touch, you can't see, and water you can. But there's, there are many similarities, and water is basically Ruchniz Dika Chesed, a package in a physical body, if you wish. But when you say something is a kitzer or a, or a map mm -hmm. or a simon or a remez, it's not quite like that. There is a leap. Even if you see the map, it's still not the original. But what you have here in the context of what we spoke about before, Ahdus Hashem, it's just a question of how deep the Ahdus is. The map would be closer to the original. The, 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 I'm sorry, the kitzer would be closer. The map would be a little more distant. The simon and the rem is even more distant than each one is relevant to different levels in the Rishimu. So suddenly you see this Rishimu that began, there's a few lines in Eitz uh, Chaim in the Haggah, is suddenly now developed into former Shalim, in addition to the Moshal that I said from the Tzamech Tzedek, which is definitely even a more distant Moshal, to write words on a page and then erase them, is even less than a Remez, because you probably you can't even see them. So this already is already a shock of Italia that... Uh, some have discussed. I'll just say the following. It's love dafka that Samach Tzedek is adding a fifth moshel. Samach Tzedek was aware of these moshel. Uh, so he's not adding a fifth moshel. What he's trying to say, there's another side to the Rishimu. And this is where I want to now dissect. There's a side to the Rishimu of what, what remains. But the question is, of what form does it remain? So Samach Tzedek is talking about the form it remains. It's like an erased, uh, a, a, whatever it is, whether it's a map or the other or a kitzer, it's erased from the point of view of the Makabal. So you can't really, there's nothing there that you could hold on to. The former Shalom are not talking about how erased it is, how the helm it is. They're talking what's there once it will be revealed. In other words, just to give an example, which is going to be relevant in, the, in this whole context. If you, for example, you know, you ever see that uh, invisible ink, right? So you like write letters and then it disappears. But if you pour liquid on it, suddenly the letters appear. Exactly as you wrote them. Now, what is going on here? What's going on is that the letters are there, just you can't you, know, you can't see them. You need something to reveal them. So the same idea is when you talk about the kav and the reshimu. The reshimu is the, as we'll talk more at length, it are the letters. But the letters don't have ur in them, or at least not ur begoli. So they're just letters. Since they were like drained of the oil that was in them through the tzimtzum. So in essentially the tzimtzum is, there were letters before the tzimtzum, the light shined through those letters, the isis. Then the oil disappears, so to speak, or like drained. So you have the letters there and they're just quiet and dormant. But as soon as the kav comes shining, it reveals the letters that were there already. So on one hand, you can't say nothing is there. On the other hand, you can't say anything, but Goli is there. 
So the Tzemach Tzedek's Marshall is more talking about that the letters were erased, meaning not that they disappeared, that they right now, from the point of view of the viewer, they're like they were erased. Remember, Lamaili, you can't say erased. Abishad didn't erase his letters, but he concealed them. And the former Shalim are talking about once you do shine the light, what are you going to get? You're going to get a ma- are you going to get a kitzur, a map, a simon or a remez? And the answer is all four, all depending either what level in the or maybe what level in Aveda we do. So in using the nimshal for all of this, as I mentioned, that the kav we're going to talk about is the shedish ha'edus, which comes from erlifinat simson. The Rishimu is the shedish ha'kelim, or otherwise known Asius. That are rooted in the Shadish Akel and Lifnat Simpson. I said Shadish. They're no Kalim, but they're Shadish Akel, which in other ACS and Chsidis is Kayach Hagvul. So the air comes from the Er Hagvul, or according to another opinion, Er Habligvul. The Shirishimu is essentially the she, the, from the Kayach Hagvul, Kayach Hagvul, not Er Hagvul, because it's not Er. The Kayach Hagvul, Lifnat Simpson, is completely concealed because it's completely submerged. Oh. It's like letters that are submerged in a big sea and ocean of air. You don't even see them for a different reason. Not because there's no air, because it's too much air. You remove the air, so to speak, or the air concealed, what's left? Aces, but aces are empty. What are aces without air? They're like the invisible ink. They're there, but there's no, you can't do anything with them. The kav will then come and bring them alive. So now you have a kav working with those aces, and that will become what we call Eiris and Kalim. The Kav provides the Eir, the Rishimu is the Kalim. But it's interesting here is that the Eir did not remain after the Tzimtzum. I mean, I should say, not Kipshute. It's been concealed. The Rishimu says did remain. That's why it's called the Rishimu. And the former Sholem just are really to talk about the level of how much it reflects what's going on in at Tzimtzum. But it's still not fully explained because what does that mean? We still didn't answer the question, what is it a shima of? I mean, I did answer that it's a shima of the letters. But the question then, Chassidus asks, so why is it called a shima? If it's exactly those letters, that just the eight is there, why do you call it a trace? It should be called letters and that are concealed. So there's, I, I mean, I'm jumping a little back and forth, but let me just answer that question. So interestingly, as we're going to learn, the next stage of this is the Rebbe Rashab, where he takes it completely to another level. And explaining the Rishimu much more in depth. And it's interesting, if you look in the Rebbe Rashab, I don't know if I'll cover it today because I want to cover something before I get there, but I just want to say it here, is the Rebbe Rashab is going to explain, in his early Maimorim, he says, yes, Lamer, and then as the Maimorim uh, go through the years, it becomes a fact that there's two things in the Rishimu that, are, that we did not know before the Rebbe Rashab. Once you see it in the Rebbe Rashab, you start to understand the Alta Rebbe and the Mitla Rebbe and the Tzedek and the Rebbe Marash. But as I said, I think I want to go to something. I want to go back a moment before we get to that. But I just wanted to state that. The Rebbe Rashab is going to say that the Rishim has two elements to it. One is the actual Asius, which is like a Nekudus. It's called Nekudus HaRashimu because you don't have spastus. It's like a Nekudus. It's what's, what's the letters in a concentrated form. And then there's the Oyer that's within those letters. Now, the Oyer is obviously not revealed. But to say that the letters are completely devoid of where you can't say either, because those aseus, like for example, if you took um, the word bracha, bracha means blessing. And even if you drain bracha from the oir, but you can't say now the letter beis reis chafei, don't have anything from the meaning of bracha, just conceal it. It's like a map, or like a, like a, or kitzur, a map, a remez, a, a simon or a remez. But to say it doesn't have anything from the oir, you can't say at all, because from the Asian's point of view, there's still the memory that it was letters of that word. And when the Kav will reveal it, you're not, it's Gilead Helam, it's not Yeshma'i. So therefore, he says that the, the Rishima has two aspects. I don't want to go now into detail because it requires its own longer explanation. I want to backtrack on that. After we covered the four Mishalim, I want to still cover a few things from the Alter Rebbe about the Rishimu. Then, after we do that, um, uh, the, the, the Alter Rebbe, and the, we're going to call the Tzemach Tzedek, and the Rebbe Marash in the Chidush that the Rebbe Marash introduces now. So you see, every Rebbe introduces something that that Aces That's another Chidush that have not been discussed yet. That the Tzimtzum did not in any way impact the letters of the Rishima. 
which was the subject of a major uh, vikuach and debate between the Baal Morgan Ovis, the Rebbe Marash's nephew, who was, um, who was the Kopis to Rebbe, who took over after the Rebbe Marash's older brother, Maril, passed away, which was within the year of the Tzamech Tzedek. So he became the Rebbe of Kopust. And uh, he was Mechabed Morganovis. His name is Zalman uh, Zalman. I don't remember the name. But essentially a nephew of the Rebbe, Mar uh, Rebbe, Rasha, of the Rebbe Marash, a cousin with the Rebbe Rashab. And there were plenty of, uh, what's called, let's put it this way, um, um, debates among them. And there was, uh, I, mean, I don't like to use the word machlekes, but there was, uh, it was a lot of tension. So when the Rebbe Marash, which we're going to learn now right now, said, wrote something about the Rishimu, the Kopister came out very strongly against it. So we have a, uh, a, a written debate between him and a Choser of the Rebbe Marash, Rav Tumarkin, Dan Tumarkin, about he's defending the Rebbe Marash and the Kopister is, is challenging that. So it's printed already. I, I wrote it in the Mara Mekemis that I gave where you can find it in uh, Melech B'Mesiba. There's a few places this uh, debate is, is uh, documented. So I want to go back. We'll, we will go back to the Misholim, and we will go back to what the real role of the Rishim was, but I think there's a few other things that need to be discussed about it to really lay the ground. And then the Rebbe Rashab, as I said, really lays, explains it in full detail in his style. So, so I covered the Kutte Teireh, I want to now go to another Maramokim, Teira Eir. This is also from the Alter Rebbe. Look at Maimer in Teira Eir, Noyach. The Maimer begins by Yemer Hashem, Heina Am Echad. It's the end of the Pasha Neir, the, day, the story of the Deira Flogger, the date of uh, the, the Tower of Babel, as they call it. So, there's a, so the Alter Rebbe discusses there and says the following. I'm going to read inside. Um, what I'm looking at right now, actually, is the Eira Teira, just to give you a little background. So Teira Eir is the Alter Rebbe's Maimorim. The Alter Rebbe did not write his own Maimorim. They were all written by Chesrim and Manichim. The Alter Rebbe wrote Tanya and some other pieces here and there. Sometimes you'll find in Teira Eir, the Lush Ksav Yad Admur Nishmuseisim Ba'atzmei, in Chayesar, in very few places. We know it's from the Alter Rebbe directly written. Everything else on my modem that would deliver on Shabbos or Yom Tif or Simchas or Chanukah Sabayis and, uh, and the Manichim, just for the record, the Manichim, I think I mentioned this a number of times. There were a total of five Manichim, generally, there were more, but mainly five ones that were the primary ones. There was the Maril, the, bro the brother of the Alter Rebbe, which is actually the primary my modem in Tere Elikuta Tere are his Anochis. Some Tzedek shows his because he was closest to the actual language of the Alter Rebbe. The Mitle Rebbe wrote, the Mitle Rebbe always elaborated a bit, and the Rab Moshe, the Alter Rebbe's other son, Rab Moshe wrote, and there was a Pinchas Rezis, you know, you have a sefer called Hanochas Harap, so as far as Maimori Admur Azokin, or all the Maimorim that come out sometimes from time to time, a new Maimor, are usually another Maniach. Sometimes they'll say, the Hanocha we have is already in this place, and now we found Hanocha from Rab Moshe, or from, uh, or from the Mitla Rebbe, or from Rapin um, not, not uh, And then finally, the Tzamech Tzedek, when he was of age, he also wrote Hanochas. So actually, you can find some Maimon that have five Hanochas of the same Maim. And they're very different. They're not different in Teichen, but style. Uh, Moshe would organize it differently. I mean, you can study it and see that. So what they're looking at is a Maimon from Teira Eir, and then that Tzemach Tzedek has Hagos on Tereir. Tzemach Tzedek writes things. It's usually in a parenthesis. You can't always tell what the Tzemach Tzedek is in Tereir and Lukut Tereir because it's not distinguished. But then in Eda Tereir of the Tzemach Tzedek, there's also another section which is called, that may have, you may have heard of, Lukut Tereir, the Gimel Pashis. It was a safer printed many years ago. They never reprinted it because there was a whole confusion about it. But it was all printed in Eda Tereir. And there you also have the Rebbe Marash's Hagos. So what I'm reading now is a piece from Teira Eir, the Tzemech Tzedek on it, and the Reb Marash on the Tzemech Tzedek. So the Tzemech Tzedek is going to ask a question on the Teira Eir, and the Reb Marash is going to answer it, which, again, is very not common. Usually, Rabbein, if there was a question from a father, usually the son, like the Reb Marash, would not answer it. But here he directly answers it, and this is what bro bro broke into a machlekes with the Kopister. 
So if you want to know the page, again, it's on the Mar Mekemis, it's the Mimer. The page is the bottom of page Tov Tov Reish Samaches Samar Aleph and Eira Teira Breshis, Volume 6. So I'm just reading, this is a language from straight from Teira Eir. Alter Rebbe says like this. Val derech zeh a hefresh bein a oris a kav la reshimu. So he's talking about different levels in the spheres. Actually, Tzeichen Zeh Shapsei Seh Tishmeru in the Kutetei says, so there's a difference between the reflection of the Kav and the Rishimu. I believe this is the first time that these two are associated, and Al-Tarebbe refers to them, and he says the following. This trace or impression or whatever you want to translate it, that remained after the concealment and the empty space, as we discussed. Dihine, all tereir. Ha'oris ha'kav meir b'chol elom l'fi erkei. The reflection of the kav, like we said, like a paintbrush, radiates in each world commensurate to that world. It's like the eris and kalim. Like you have the eir that goes eiraria in your eye, eirashmiya in your ear. So the eir itself, in each world, you don't have the same amount of so-called, let's say, uh, soul energy in your brain as you have in the toe of your, uh, in your toenail. They all are alive. You're one live human being. But the Gilead Eid is much more in Seichel, for example, than in, uh, in, in, in other faculties. So he says, says the So now the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe is introducing a new uh, definition. What does that mean? Till now, we're talking about Rishimu is a trace, an impression, yeah, a kitzer, a map, uh, a, 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 um, a, a simen or a remez. But what does this mean? Kelelus lechala elimus, which means kav is lower than the Rishimu, this would imply, because the kav is the fiat of kolelum, and the Rishimu, kelelus lechala elimus. So this is not clear. Says the Tzemach Tzedek, this needs iun. Which is usually means a question. The mavur b'kama mekemis. This is a tzemach tzedek's lashon now. The kav gavaya harba marishimu. That the kav is far higher and greater than the rishimu. According to this, the kav is like mamala kolam, so to speak. Each the free kol elam, and the rishimu kolalas kol elamis. However, you explain what means a kolalas kol elamis. He says tzarechim because it appears in many places that the kav is far greater than the rishimu. And he says, "V'ayim ba geres akedish, ma'amer diyu v'chayui, which is a geres akedish simen chof, famous a geres akedish, which is Al Tereba wrote not long before his istalkus." It says, "Ha'ares ha'kav ha'ares da ha'ares da ha'ares da ha'ares da ha'ares." He's quoting that that the kav is a very very high level. Then there's reflection of the kav. There's a reflection of the reflection. There's a reflection of the reflection of the reflection. Just to demonstrate. How powerful is Kavit? That's the Tzemach Tzedek's Haga Tzarechiyan. Okay, so till there, we have the Alter Rebbe statement, the Tzemach Tzedek's question, and that's where it remains. We don't know anything more. Comes the Rebbe Marash, son of the Tzemach Tzedek, the next Rebbe. This is one of the places, the rare places where your mama see the Ishtalshlis of a Sugi and Chsidis from Rebbe to Rebbe, because clearly Alter Rebbe says one thing, the Tzemach Tzedek asks, and the Rebbe Marash answers. V'ula yeshlema, says the Rebbe Marash. I'm reading Mamish Lashen here. Maybe you can say, Shebi'in ha-gilui, when you talk about revelation, the power of gilui, ha-kav gavoye yeser. The kav is higher, because the kav is light. The Rishim is not light. The Rishim is not revealed. The Rishim is a inyan, but it's not the gilui. Shaydeh oris ha-kav nimshcha gilui ba-atzilus, o belamayla ma-atzilus, because through the reflection of the kav, the er, gili er and sof, comes into atzilus and higher than atzilus. The gam, in addition, kisherish inya bekiyas akav. An additional point that the root of the bekiyas akav, the fact that the kav compares the tzimtzum, also tells you about its power. Because here, imagine, the abish that makes a tzimtzum conceals all the er and sof. So if it's all concealed, how does the kav have power to go into a place that the able to conceal? So you have to say the kav has a certain surge of energy that allows it to pierce this, this 
heavy veil called the tzimtzum. So he says another thing about the kav, because the root of the kiyas akav, meaning the kav piercing the tzimtzum, who be eden sof shalamaylam at tzimtzum. You have to say it comes from eden sof that's higher than the tzimtzum, because the eden sof that the tzimtzum concealed, the power of tzimtzum is more powerful than the eden sof. That's how Varayit concealed it. The fact that the kav compares that means it has a power. It's like you build a dam and the water is rushing. So that's it. The dam is more powerful than the water. But suddenly you see that the water breaks through the dam. So you have to say the water either re reached a level of, of pressure or some other surge came that was so powerful it broke right through the dam. That's just al derech mosh. So the b'kiyas ha'kav hu be'enesha shalman ma'atzimtsu shu be'keya li'es nimsha b'chines simtsum ha'kav chulu. So two things he says, that the kav in giluyim is higher than uh, the rishim. He's going to talk about the rishim in a moment. And the second thing is the fact that it can pierce through also demonstrates its power. Omnom, all this is Loshen Ha Rebbe Marash. So he says, Omnom, however, Harishimu, he built it Simpson Claw. The Rishimu doesn't have a Simpson altogether. The Kav in Gilui is, of course, a Gilui, but it's subject to Simpson. The Kav is still a, a narrow air compared to Lifniat Simpson. Yes, it has a power. That comes from even higher, but it's still subject to tzimtzum, or else it wouldn't be a kav. And here the Rishim built it tzimtzum klal. Shahari mashin is tzimtzum. Achle nisha rak Rishim hini er shenoga bayat tzimtzum. That which was concealed to the point that what only thing that remained was a Rishimu is a er shenoga bayat tzimtzum. Obviously, that's why it's concealed. If there's no, if there's chol amokim pony, you have to say an er was affected by the tzimtzum, or else what's the point? The symptom had to affect the air. The fact that the air is not kipshute, the symptom is not kipshute, it's concealed, but it is concealed. That's why there's mokim na le'ilims. That is the air. Mashanisha bechina shushima, and then he goes on. Um, I'm sorry. So he says, I guess, actually, initially, like the shimmy, the air should not go bad symptom, the stalic, let's do them. That air receded to the sides. So you're now saying that what remains that is Shimu, that Simpson not at all had any Nagia at all. I'm going to I'll explain this more probably next year because there's a thing called Simpson, there's Nagabad Simpson, and then there's no Nagia at all. He says, Lay Nagabay at Simpson Klaal. Shimoya Magia had Simpson, Gamba Eda Rashimu. Because if the Simpson reached also in the Eda Rashimu, he calls it Eda Rishimu, not because it's Gili. He means the, the expression of a Rishimu. Because if the Tzimtzum affected also the Rishimu, then why do you say there's a Rishimu? Everything was concealed. So you have to say that Rishimu was not affected by the Tzimtzum, and that's why it remains. Now, of course, as we'll discuss, the couplets that argued, who says he says that all of it remained. Something remained. But you can't say that Simpson didn't affect it at all. That's his argument, which makes sense. But with that, we you know, we have to be patient and discuss. But I just want to continue. The truth is like this. There's a, 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 another good few lines. So when he says like this, so, so, I'm not sure how to read this. Good. And being that something did remain, what we call Rishimu, repeats it again. So based on this, the Eir Rishimu is without any Tzimtzum. I'm sorry, Tzimtzum Klaal. And even though the piercing of the kav, like we said earlier, comes from Eden Sef Makif, Shesham Le Nogat Simpson also, but Raya, the kav can pierce, Makol Mokim, had a nimshu bechinis kav, Shesaut Simpson. But there you can't say there was no impact. You could just say the kav has an element that can pierce. But what pierced is not the whole air, it's only a kav. So there is, a, so it's affected by the Simpson. 
Mitzad my loss of Zen is boy Khan Shadashima he beginus hakalolius. And now the Rebbe Rasha says that's why the Alta Rebbe is saying the Gabi this prat that a shim is a clolius thing that encompasses all the worlds. Rakshazel behelam kaneda. However, it's in the state of helam. Well, Maila Sakav Zeo Mitsada Gilui, and the Maila of the Kav is Gilui, but the Maila of the Rashima, since it's not touched by the Tsimsum, that it encompasses the whole picture, untouched by the Tsimsum, but it's in a state of concealment. Now, of course, we need to explain what this means, and I will. Then the Alter Rebbe, go, the Ramarash has another Eidia Shlemer, which I'm going to leave again for next week. And let's, uh, let's stop here.